Hello everyone. Uh, this is Chidambaram Krushe from High Performance Computing Team. I work as a grad research assistant with the High Performance Computing Team. So today I'm going to present you the introduction to Open AC Workshop on Discovery. So this is going to be an introductory inter introductory course. So we'll be seeing uh, a few directives that can help your C or C++ or Fortran program to accelerate your code. So let's uh, begin the workshop okay uh, so these are the outlines of the workshop so in this open acc workshop we will cover the following first we will see what is open acc what are the programming languages that support open acc next we will see the four main advantages of using open acc for parallel computations okay and then we'll go through gpu definitions and then we look at some of the key differences between CPU and GPU. We will also explore when to use CPUs and GPUs. Okay. Then uh, we'll see the list of OpenACC compilers. Also, we'll talk about how we can use OpenACC through model system in discovery, because in discovery, every software is available through the model system. So we need to know what model system supports OpenACC. So we'll go through that. Next, uh, we'll see the list of uh, why to use OpenACC directives and their common usage. Then we'll go through an example program in C programming uh, in language. And we I'll show you how you can use OpenACC to accelerate the uh, C program, okay? Um, and I'll show you how you can you know implement OpenACC with that C program and discovery. And then uh, we'll explore some of the success stories of OpenACC because some real companies like, like like good companies, software companies, they are actually using OpenACC to accelerate their code. So we'll some uh, some of the success stories over there. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, so what is OpenACC? So OpenACC it stands for Open Accelerators. Okay, it's a programming standard to achieve parallelism in order to speed up the code execution and get the results faster. It allows programmers to take advantage of the accelerators such as GPUs from NVIDIA, AMD, et cetera. So accelerators are nothing but, you know, uh, devices that can speed up the process as they come in like a separate device in the form of GPUs. So OpenACC simplifies the programming of uh, CPU, GPU systems, okay? So it's not a GPU programming model. It's actually a parallel programming model that can run on multi-core CPUs, GPUs, et cetera, okay? And uh, it supports C, C++, Fortran programming languages. It comes in the form of uh, compiler pragmas, which are called directives. So these directives are like special commands, which you can insert into your C, C++ Fortran code. So what it means that you can insert simple hints to tell the compiler to parallelize the sections of code that has computationally intensive tasks. You don't need to write code in a, in a certain way to achieve parallelism. You can just write your code. And at the end, you can just insert these directives so the compiler, when you compile it, after seeing such directives, it will do the daunting task of turning the serial code into parallel by itself, okay? So if the compiler does not support OpenACC, it's just gonna ignore this command and runs as a normal serial one. So that's the beauty of OpenACC, okay? And, and another thing to note down here is the execution of the OpenACC always starts on the host CPU and ends on the CPU, only the, the intermediate computationally tasks, like, you know, the, the intensive functions that you can, you know, make it run on the GPU. But you have to remember that execution always begins and ends on CPU, okay? So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this is, this is a small open ACC directive example, okay? So uh, in this example, we have used something called Pragma ACC kernels, which is the directive, you know, we use to tell sections of codes, that we want to parallelize in a program, okay? Uh, it's, you, can, you can just, you know, just insert this one single uh, line and what it's gonna do is it's gonna run the, the, the code block, which is after this, uh, after this, you know, this pragma statement, it's gonna run this thing automatically on the GPU, okay? You just need to insert this directive at the correct place and the code block below that, it's gonna run everything's on the parallel on the GPU, okay? Uh, so, because of that, you can see that the open ACC directive is very simple 
you know it's it's very simple and it's very powerful and portable as well i will explain what is powerful and portable in the next slide but you can see that the open is directives the way of implementation is very simple okay let's go to the next slide and see why open acc is you know powerful portable and simple okay okay um the reason why it is simple is you can just insert simple directives for a program you don't need to write you know or change code in a certain way to achieve parallelism okay so if you consider the cuda programming model as far as i know you have to rewrite a lot like you know for to achieve parallelism but here you can just you know put this one or two or three lines of code you know at the appropriate place and that's it it's going to run everything parallel on gpu okay so that's the reason it is very simple and why it is powerful so case studies you know a lot of case studies show that the performance of the code after optimization done by open acc it showed 10x results faster so there are like a lot of case studies listed in the open acc website so it showed that you know the performance boost is like 10x faster and it's single source okay what do you mean by single source you don't need to have like two versions let's say one for serial and one for parallel let's say you are working on a project you can insert simple open acc directives to run the code in parallel okay so somebody else who is who is working on the project who is not even aware of open acc you know he or she can just ignore these directives and do the serial execution so the point here is you don't need to have two separate versions of code you can just make an one single code and you can run it on cpus and gpus as well okay so that's the reason we can just make in a single source code repo okay and the next thing is why it is portable you can run the same code across like various gpus as well you can take the same code and run across various gpus or environments without having to change the code okay running code from multi core cpu to k80 gpu or to p100 nvidia gpu it requires only changing a compiler flag that you have to change it so if the compiler does not support open acc it just ignores these commands okay so you can see it's very portable you can run it across like different different you know gpus or environments or cpus as well just twisting the just changing the compiler flag okay and these are the four main advantages of open acc okay now let's look at you know what are gpus okay uh, the point of this slide is to make users understand what are gpus because open acc it's all about using the accelerators such as gpus or separate devices which will accelerate the code so we need to understand what are gpus and what are the difference between gpu and and the traditional multi core cpu okay so gpus are accelerators yeah they come as a separate device so they are they are used to help you know accelerate the code or application uh, gpus you know they facilitate processing intensive operations such as you know deep learning analytics and engineering applications but initially the gpus are meant for video games but later on they started using for deep learning and scientific computing as well and then the cpus and gpus are connected by the help of a pci bus it's it's peripheral component interconnect express which is the local computer bus for connecting hardware devices in a computer and the cpu and gpu the main point is they have their own mem separate memory space hence programming is required for data transfers the data is generally copied from cpu to gpu via the pci bus obtaining high performance on gpu nodes often require reducing pci copies to a minimum so they have their own you know memory space however you know new pascal gpus they handle kind of unified memory in hardware so and uh, you can see the you know in the slides the list of nvidia tesla gpus which are available in discovery k40 p100 b100 a100 so uh, if you have any tasks that require like gpu like machine, in you know some in some machine learning or deep learning or scientific computing tasks if you need any gpu so you can use the gpus you know these many gpus are available in discovery you can use any one of them and these discovery gpus are not meant for 3d acceleration so you can request these gpus for a job you know using this s batch or run interactive jobs thing as run okay i will show an example as well how to request gpus how to accelerate the code by running on gpu using open acc okay now let's go to the next slide and let's see what are the key differences between cpus and gpus okay the cpu as we all know it has lesser number of cores and gpu on the other hand they have more number of cores okay in our cluster 
if you consider the discovery g1 node it has intel e5 2640 version 3 2.6 gigahertz the cpu and nvidia tesla k40 as the gpu so if you if you compare the cpu and gpu the intel's one has only eight cores however the nvidia tesla k40 has 2880 CUDA cores. So you can see the difference in the number of cores in CPUs and GPU. The CPUs, they have less number of faster cores. The GPUs have large number of smaller cores, okay? So a serial task runs faster on a CPU, however, a parallel task runs faster on GPU. CPUs are optimized for low latency. GPUs are optimized for high throughput, okay? So the term latency means is how long it takes to finish a given task. The term throughput denotes that how many times you can complete the task within a given period of time. That's what throughput denotes, okay? So let's try to understand like, you know, with a basic example, what is the difference between latency and throughput? Let's consider a scenario that will help us to distinguish between latency and throughput, okay? So consider a, a teacher that teaches a science course, okay? And, and the teacher can help one student to get a basic knowledge of science in one month, okay? I mean, by, by doing an in-person teaching, the teacher can help the students, you know, to achieve the basic knowledge of science in one month. However, the online course will take five months for the same student to achieve a basic knowledge of science, okay? So this is called latency. The teacher can, for the student, you know, uh, he can, uh, the student can, you know, go for the in-person teaching with the in-person class with the teacher and uh, he or she can complete the task, uh, you know, in one month. So that's called low latency, okay? How fast you can complete the or task or how fast you can learn the course. Okay, let's consider the same example for throughput. The same teacher can only teach science to five students in private in five months. That is like one student per month. However, the online course can do the same to thousand students in five months. So, so the online course can help thousand students, you know, to get the basic level of, you know, the science in five months, you know, it, it can help thousand students, but the teacher can only do it to five students, okay? So that's called, you know, high throughput. Uh, so now I assume you got a clear idea between the difference between latency and throughput, okay? So CPUs are optimized for low latency to finish a task as fast as possible. GPUs are optimized for throughput. They're slow, but they operate on bulks of data at once. The reason why latency is low in G CPU is CPUs have cache, different levels of cache. So this will reduce the time from getting the data from memory. Also CPUs have better clock speed. So these are the reasons attributed to you know the low latency. Thus, we can conclude that CPU can do handful of operations at a single time in a very fast way. On the other hand, GPUs can do thousands of operations at a time. Okay, so these are the key difference between CPUs and GPUs. Okay, and now let's see uh, what are some of the open ACC com compatible compilers out there in the market. So there are PGI, GCCC, Cray, and Caps. So PGI is developed by Portland Group and later bought by NVIDIA in 2013. They now come with the name of NVIDIA compiler. So in discovery, PGI's compiler replacement is available through NVHPC module system. We'll be using this module NVHPC for our, you know, for our demo purpose. On the other hand, GCC is uh, famous and open source. Uh, open GCC was released for GCC version started from 5.0, but highly recommended to use GCC version 10.0 because the earlier versions were kind of buggy and incomplete. And some of the commercial compilers out there are Caps and Cray. So these are commercial compilers. And for in discovery, we have a module system called NDHPC. So that has these compilers, PGI compilers. Okay. These are the compilers we have. And Let's now let's see some of the useful open ACC directives and clauses. Okay, the first one is Pragma ACC kernel. So what Pragma ACC kernel is gonna do is it, it generates parallel accelerator kernel directives for the loops following the directive. So this tells the compiler that run the code block in the GPU. This runs the loop in parallel on the GPU. It is very simple, just one line of command and will run the things in parallel on the GPU. Pragma in C states that we add some additional functionalities to the compiler. The Pragma ACC kernel applies for the code which are within the curly braces like while loop or for loop. That's what Pragma ACC kernel does. And then we have the next directory called Pragma ACC data copy. And then list is like list of values. It's very useful to manage efficient data transfers between the host CPU and GPU. 
before the region or loop starts, uh, if you have this directive, the data is copied from the host to the GPU. And once the region or loop exits, the data is copied back to the host CPU. This is very useful to prevent sections of the code from repeated read and write. So we'll explain this use case uh, in our demo. Also, we have uh, uh, another important directory called Pragma ACC parallel loop. So this combines the parallel and the loop construct. Uh, this directive is same as the ACC kernel directive. However, there is a slight difference between these two. The kernel's construct uh, gives the compiler maximum freedom to parallelize and optimize the code, how it sees fit for the target accelerator, but also it relies most heavily on the compiler's ability you know, to automatically parallelize the code. As a result, you know, the programmer may see differences in what different compilers are able to parallelize and how they do so. On the other hand, parallel loop directive is an assertion given by the programmer that it is you know, safe and desirable to parallelize the affected loop. This relies on the programmer to have correctly identified parallelism in the code and remove anything in the code that may be unsafe to parallelize. So if the programmer asserts incorrectly, then the loop may be that the loop may be parallelized, then the resulting application may produce incorrect results. So it's better to go with Pragma ACC kernel. Okay. And next we have some of the important open ACC clauses. So the first one is the private clause. So it specifies that each loop iteration requires its own copy of the listed variables. For example, if if each loop contains a small temporary array. Um, named uh, temporary array that is used during its calculation, then this variable must be made private. Okay, you have to declare that variable as a private to each loop iteration in order to ensure correct results. If it is not declared private, then threads executing different loop iterations may access this shared temporary variable in unpredictable ways. So it, it might result, you know, in an incorrect result. So if you have like any temporary variable, uh, you know, you have to specify it as a private class. And then there is a reduction clause, it's similar to private clause, uh, which it, it, it reduces the private copies of the variables into one final result, which is written from the region. For example, you, you might be like doing like a max of certain value or min of certain value. Okay, so in that case, you can use this reduction clause and then you can have a parenthesis, okay? And you can um, uh, specify the operation uh, and then uh, the variable name, okay? so. In, in our demo, we are, we'll be exploring the first direct two directives because it's an introductory course. Okay, so we'll be exploring the first two directives. I like, you know, in a live demo. And yeah, so these are the important uh, useful open HC directives and classes. Okay, and let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this is the example uh, we are gonna uh, use for our demo. So the example is Jacobi relaxation. So it's a it's a method to solve a system of two dimensional equations. So I'm not gonna go dive deep into Jacobi relaxation because it involves a lot of mathematical proofs and derivatives. I'm just gonna keep it simple and explain how the programming for Jacobi relaxation works. Okay. Uh, so now I'll explain how the Jacobi relaxation works. So the matrix is you know initialized with certain number of rows and columns. Okay. So uh, initially, you know, the matrix is filled with some initial values and there's like a naive solution of 10. And then how this Jacobi relaxation work is the naive solution, you know, it gets improved by calculating a new solution. And at the each iteration, the matrix gets updated. Okay. The value of cell, you know, is calculated uh, with the help of the formula. Basically, what it does is it takes the average of the four neighboring cells, you know, except diagonally adjacent. Uh, that is add all the four adjacent values and divided by four. And this is in this way, the, the value of the matrix gets updated at each iteration. Okay, so let's see how, how it gets updated. Okay, let's go to the next slide and show an example. Okay, so how this Jacobi election runs. So initially, you know, it gets, it gets uh, filled with some uh, initial values. Okay, so you can see the top and bottom rows are filled with ones and the left and left most and right most columns are filled with ones. Okay. And you see uh, the cells highlighted in red color. So these cells are gonna get updated at each step, you know, at each iteration, okay? So at each iteration, uh, the cells which are highlighted in red color, what, how it gets updated is it, it takes the average of the four neighboring cells, okay? And it updates the value, okay? 
So if you go to the next slide, there is an illustration. Okay, you see, you see, you see the cell highlighted, you know, in violet color. Uh, you see it's four, okay? The reason why it's four is because if you calculate the average of the cells which are highlighted in, you know, in orange color, you see one plus one is two, two plus 10 is 12, 16, and then 16 divided by four is four. So that's how we update, you know, each cell's value, okay? And um, similarly, the other cells also get updated with the same formula. And you can see, you know, the, the cell uh, M of one, two, uh, it takes the four uh, adjacent cells, which is one, two, 12, and six. If you add it up, it's gonna give you 21. So 21 divided by four is 5.25. So you can see uh, it gets, you can see how 5.25 gets updated for the iteration, okay? So this is the whole idea of Jacobi relaxation, okay? And, okay. Uh, okay, so, and also whenever you calculate a new value, there is also an uh, error variable, which gets, uh, which gets updated. So error is equal to max of the current error value. And then it takes the absolute difference of the old cells value with the new cell value, okay? So there is an error variable, which is also get, get you know, calculated at every step of the iteration. So in order for the next iteration to continue, we also specify a maximum number of iterations for the program. So the next iteration should be less than the max iteration and the error must be greater than tolerance level. Okay, so these are the two conditions for the program, you know, to continue for the next iteration. When one of the condition fails, the program stops the execution and the solution is converged. Okay, else the program continues until the solution is converged. Okay, excuse me. Okay, so this is the uh, um, whole uh, idea of Jacobi relaxation. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the program. Okay, so I have, I have logged into discovery. Okay, and Okay, so now, okay, so this is the directory I have the Jacobi program, okay? So yeah, so this is the program for Jacobi iteration, okay? So I'm just gonna walk you through, okay? So there is like a, a, a static value defined here, which is 4096 for the number of rows and columns for the matrix. And these are the initializations, you know, and then we set the uh, max iteration to be thousand and also the tolerance level is, on point zero expansion minus six, so it's just basically point zero 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 one. Okay. Uh, and then we have the error, which is 1.0. That's the error we set initially. And then uh, we set the memory and then we initialize the values. And the first for loop here is just initializing the value randomly. Okay. And then the next for loop is like filling the initial values for the matrix. And these are just initialization going on. The main computation here is this this while loop, okay? So you can see here, the while loop starts here. It says that when the error is greater than tolerance and the iteration is less than maximum iteration, you know, it keeps continuing, the, the iteration is gonna continue, okay? So this is my error variable 0, 0.0 and this is my first for loop and see how it is calculating the average. So here a new is the, is the, is the matrix that stores the new values, okay? And you see a new of j i, uh, it's it's basically calculating the average of the you know point two five one by four. It's it's calculating the average of the neighboring cells, and then you see you know it is also updating the error variable. Error is equal to maximum of error comma the absolute value of you know the new value minus the old value, okay? So it's calculating these values, okay? And and it's it's just it's storing in the new matrix a new. And then what it is doing is once once the calculation is done, it's copying the values of the new matrix to the you know the to the to the matrix A and makes it ready for the next iteration. So now it it makes sense you know how the program works. Okay, so that's what I was like explaining in the uh, past you know in the previous slides like how the algorithm worked. Okay, and and once the you know again I'm repeating once the error becomes greater than tolerance and the iteration is less than you know. Maximum iteration, 
it's the program is going to stop and also i have set a timer store equals clock and then also i have set it at the uh, end end is equal to clock here okay you can see this one okay so i'm just trying to calculate the time used for for the iteration okay so you can see the whole whole computation is is this while loop if you consider this whole program the 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 comp intensive functions for this program is is this while loop right okay so now let's let's try to run you know compile with the uh, pgcc compiler okay so i'm going to save and quit okay and now i'm going to go to the next slide okay okay so okay so i'm going to i'm going to show you how to get the pgcc compiler so this compiler is uh, available through the uh, nvhpc module okay so now let's let's uh, let's let's load the module okay let's load the module and see what are the compilers and different utilities they have because it has a bunch of uh, utilities and compilers okay so you know in discovery if you want to load any module you can do it with module load system module load command module load and then the module name uh, so this will load in the hpc module let's i just want to show you the um, compiler so let me get the path Okay, so now I just gonna. Okay, okay, awesome. So you can see the you know you have like bunch of uh, comp compilers and utilities, and you see there is a thing called NVC. And then NVC is the same as you know. Let's let's see the PGCC one first. Okay, you see PGCC. So this is the Portland Groups compiler. Okay, so since Nvidia bought it and you know it still come you know comes you know in the name of PGCC. Through this software, and then we have PGC plus plus. This means for C plus plus program. So these PGCC, PGC plus plus, they they support Open ACC, okay. And also you have like PG Fortran, okay, that supports uh, uh, Fortran programming languages. And also there is a thing called NVC. So this NVC compiler, it's based, it's formally known as PGCC. So you can use this one as well. Both both supports Open ACC. Nothing wrong. And also there is an NVC C plus plus. So this compiler is formally known as PGC plus plus, and then there is a thing called NV Fortran as well there. Yeah, so you can use either PGCC or NVC. Okay, so for our experiment, I'm going to use PGCC compiler. Okay, and let's. Okay, so. Okay, so now before you know we test our experiment, we have to, we have to either submit it as a batch script or run an interactive session, right? So. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, launch an interactive session so that it helps, you know, it makes makes us, you know, understand about like what's happening uh, in the code. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, request an interactive session. Okay. Okay, so I'll explain the flags. So, okay, so I have launched an interactive session. You can see the 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 terminal has been changed from changed to Discovery C thirty four from Discovery also, right? So now we have an interactive session. Okay, and uh, now let's just uh, run without Open ACC, right? We will just. Uh, compile the you know uh, c program that we have okay so we are just going to create an this dot output excuse me okay so now okay it's compiled successfully let me do an ls and then there's this dot out file and now let's run okay okay so the relaxation calculation for the uh, matrix with 4096 rows and 4096 columns is started. Okay. And 
I'll explain the uh, different flags that we use for the interactive session. Uh, S is the command uh, to launch an interactive session, and hyphen n is the uh, uh, tasks, and then hyphen p is the uh, partition, and then I have said is interactive. The reason why I went for interactive is interactive partition is uh, uh, it's 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 uh, it's very good for short and debugging jobs. And then there is a time flag. I have said it as one hour and then zero minutes and zero seconds, and then I'm specifying a pseudo terminal, okay? So these are the flags I use, and, and you can see it's on the C34 uh, compute node, okay? So the program is experimented on discovery C34 node. So this node has Intel uh, Xeon Gold 6226.9 GSD processor, okay? And uh, Okay, so let's wait for the execution time. So I have done this experiment in prior. So it gave me 201 seconds, approximately 3.5 minutes. We didn't we didn't use any open ACC flags, right? We just we are just running a normal C program with the PGCC compiler that supports C language and open ACC. Okay. Let's try to measure the time. Okay. Let's see uh, how much time it takes. Okay. And uh, Okay, so, so 500 iterations are done. So still halfway to go. So this uh, NBHPC module uh, that you have in discovery, you, you have like, as I, uh, as I showed you already, it has a lot of compilers and utilities. You can use it for C++ or Fortran programming languages, you know, that you can use open HC directives. Okay, we are close to the end of the execution time. Let's wait for a minute, it should run. Okay. Okay, so you can see it took exactly 201 second, 201 point, 201 seconds, 201.8, okay? And it's approximately 3.5 minutes. So the code, it took 3.5 minutes without you know any open ACC flag, just you know, normal execution of the PGCC compiler, right? It, it's, it has taken uh, uh, this much, this many seconds, okay? So now uh, let's move to the next slide and see how we can use open ACC um, uh, compilers or, okay. So I'm gonna compile this again with PGACC and I'm gonna use a hyphen, hyphen ACC flag, okay. So if an O test dot out and then Jacobi ex dot C, okay. Okay, so now the, there's a new, uh, uh, test dot outside generated. Now let's try to run the uh, output. Okay. So what I have done now is I have used a new flag called hyphen ACC, right? So what this hyphen ACC does. So this hyphen ACC flag, it 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 informs the compiler, uh, you know, you know, to compile the open ACC directives, right? Okay. It just says, you know, use the Excel accelerator to uh, run a program. Okay, let's see how whether we are able to see any performance improvement with this uh, hyphen ACC flag by running it on a, uh, a CPU. Okay. Okay. We are uh, testing again uh, with the C34 compute node uh, flag. Okay.
Okay. Okay. So let's leave this uh, execution to run. Let's move to the next slide. Okay. I'll come back to this slide. Let's move to the next slide. You know, how we can use GPU, you know, uh, to parallelize it further. Okay. Because uh, the, the execution on the right side is going to take around 170 seconds. Okay. So uh, we have, we have brought down the time from 201 second to 170 seconds, you know, by just using an hyphen ACC flag. Okay, the whole point of this open ACC is harness or use the power of GPUs, right? So before we use GPUs, we need to request resources to the slum, on a, which is a workload manager at discovery, you know, how you can request the GPU, right? We have to make a request to the slum, hey, give me GPUs, right? So you can see this, uh, strn command at the bottom so strn hyphen n and then and then space followed by one and then there is a flag called hyphen hyphen gpus per task okay here i'm so what this flag does is uh, it 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 uh, requests one gpu for our tasks okay and then hyphen p stands for partition and i'm saying it as an interactive which is ideal for short jobs and then the time is just one hour okay um, I can just leave it as like, a, yeah, one horn hour should be enough for the experiment, okay. And then hyphen hyphen PTY bin bash, okay. So this is how you um, uh, request GPUs. And on the right top image, you can see NVIDIA SMI. It's a command line utility. It, it's based on uh, top of the NVIDIA management library. It's intended to aid in the management and monitoring of NVIDIA GPU devices, okay. So, Let's use the same interactive partition. So this interactive partition has discovery G14 and 15 GPU nodes available. It has NVIDIA Tesla 800 GPUs. So each node has two GPUs in it. So we can use the same partition and request resources to the slum. Okay, so now we can see our time has, uh, it has been brought down to 170 seconds, okay? I'm gonna go back to the previous slide. You can see it's 170 seconds, you know, when I was doing the experiment, yeah, 171, it's all the same, okay? So we have brought down the time from 201 seconds to 171 seconds, just passing the hyphen ACC flag. We didn't use any open ACC directive, we didn't use any GPUs, okay. So now let's go to the next slide, okay. Okay, so now, okay. So now I'm just gonna exit the session, okay. I'm gonna request a new interactive session by having a GPUs on it, the slum. GPUs per task on hyphen P interactive and then let's see and pty okay okay so now let me clear the screen and you can see there is an interactive session launched at g14 which is a gpu node okay let's confirm whether we have uh, gpus available by running this command in smi Okay, you can see, yeah, there is a uh, NVIDIA 800 GPU we have. So this is this is GPU available, you know, for a session. So let's clear the screen out. Okay, now we have request GPU. Okay, so now let's try to insert our uh, first open ECC directive. Okay, okay. So before running it on the GPU, let's insert this open ACC directive. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my program. Okay. So I'm gonna insert my open ACC directive here. Okay, I need to go to the insert mode. Okay, I have inserted the first nested for loop. Okay, so I have inserted in uh, two places. Okay, so this directive is basically, you know, placed before the start of any 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 for loop or any for loop or any loop computations. Okay, so the reason why it's placed before the for loop is it's gonna run the code block which is which is after that, you know, run to run down GPU by parallelizing it. Okay, the reason why I have placed before these two for loops is because these are the these are the intensive functions, right? You know, code these are the intensive functions in the code. So that's the reason I have I have placed a pragma AC kernels before these two nested for loops. Okay. So when the compiler sees it, it generates parallel accelerator kernels for the loops following the directive. 
uh, this tells the compiler that you know run the code block in the GPU. Uh, this runs the loop in parallel on the GPU. Now let's see how we can compile with PGCC compiler and run it on the GPU. Okay, so now we have inserted the uh, OpenACC directive. Okay. 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 Um. Okay. So now I've saved it. Okay. Uh. Now let's see how we can uh compile this OpenACC directive. Go to the next. I'm going to go to the next slide. Okay, so we have already NVHPC available, so we don't need to load again. So I'm gonna uh, use these flags. Okay. So um, I have used uh, these flags, you know, to compile uh, my uh, open ACC program. Okay, so let's ex let's explore these flags. Okay, first I have used a flag called hy hyphen ACC. So what it says is, you know, just we inform the compiler to compile any open ACC directive that we have, right? So that's the uh, use of this uh, hyphen ACC flag. And then next is we have hyphen TA, which stands for target architecture. Uh, in this case, we are targeting NVIDIA Tesla GPUs here. Also, I have specified uh, time. Uh, you can see here Tesla comma time. So this time will show some useful information about the time each process took after the job finishes. Okay, This is very helpful in analyzing the hotspots of the code. Once we know which parts of the code are taking more time, we can optimize further with other open directives. Okay, so that's the reason a time flag is uh, specified. And then there is a another flag called hyphen m in four uh, equals axel axel. Okay, uh, this is used to print the information about the acceleration, like what regions of the code are targeted by the GPUs or accelerators. Okay, then um, uh, if you run this command, you will see like a bunch of uh, uh, useful information. Uh, the first one is uh, you see generating implicit copy in, but the main thing uh, that we can infer from the output is this information 77, 79. You know, the, the loop at the 77, line number 77, and the loop at the line number 79 is parallelizable. It's generating the Tesla code. So remember, uh, we placed this pragma ACC kernels before the start of the first uh, nested for loop. So um, so the compiler is saying these two loops are parallelizable and I'm just gonna create a Tesla code. It, it, it creates a GPU code and it offloads to the GPU, you know, the code block, which is after the first nested for loop. Similarly, there is a, another loop is parallelizable state. And this because we have, we had two pragma ACC kernels before you know two for loops so that's the reason we have uh you know the compiler is generating two tesla code okay uh okay so now we have gone through the flags and now let the clear play the screen out and now let's try to run the output file okay so okay so now uh, let's try to compare the time, okay? And let's see whether we can bring the time from 170 seconds, you know, to, you know, whether we can decrease from 170 seconds. Okay. Should It should take around 70 seconds uh, this time.
Okay. We're almost done with our execution and let's see how much time it took. Okay, awesome. So it took 92 seconds, okay, not bad. So we are able to bring the time down from uh, uh, 170 to 92 seconds, okay. And let's go to the next slide and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, when I was ex experimenting, it took like 87 seconds. Uh, now we took 92 seconds, okay, it's okay. Uh, so we're able to bring the time down from 170 seconds to 87, right? Uh, oh, sorry, 92, uh, okay, in, 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 in this experiment, okay? Uh, remember for the serial run, we didn't use any, uh, uh, any, any flag. So it was 210 seconds. And then we used an hyphen ACC flag. The time was, uh, Later, the time was 170, and now it was 92 seconds. Okay, and I'm gonna go to the next slide. Okay, and and we also have an interesting piece of information here, right? We have like a bunch of information about compute region, data region, compute region, data region. Okay, and the the reason why this information gets printed is because we passed a time flag okay so it it's giving some you know device time you can see here elapsed time right so you can see this one yeah so the total is the total time it took so it's actually in microseconds if you convert it it's going to be uh, it's it's going to be if you convert 1596735 seconds you know to uh to normal second then it's going to be 1.5 okay 0.5 seconds okay and uh, the interesting information we can note down here is this one the, the line number 73 remember this is the line we inserted the first open ACC directive okay for the start of the first nested for loop okay you can see the device time it took is you know in total time it was like seven you know, it was in microseconds. If you convert it, it was like seven seconds. Okay, and also in line number eighty-five, uh, it took seventeen seconds. Okay, and uh, and then uh, this is a this is a data region. Okay, so which means that it's basically reaching the data, either host or GPU, and doing some kind of data operations. Okay, and you see initially, you know, data copying means that it's copying the data from the host CPU to the GPU, okay? And placing it over there uh, to do the computation, okay? And also in line number 85, the total time is for copying and transfer is 7.4 seconds, okay? And for copy out, we have uh, 17 seconds, okay? So this might be like a little confusing, okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to repeat like what's, what's happening. Okay. So during the start of the first nested for loop, the, the data a, and then a new, okay. Th those are the matrices value. A is the original matrix and a new is the one we are going to use to update our values. It's copied, you know, it's, it's copying the data from the host memory to the GPU. Okay. During the start of the first nested for loop. Okay. So, let me open the program and show you. Okay. Okay. So let me set the line number as well. Because the key thing here is to understand what's going on. Okay. So before this nested, you know, this nested for loop starts, okay, what it is doing is when the compiler sees this directive, it copies the data from the uh, host CPU to the GPU because you know the code block below the nested for loop, it's gonna run it on GPU, right? So it, you need to make the data available on GPU in order for it to process, okay? So what this Pragma ACC kernel does is, it basically copies the data, okay, from the host CPU and places it on the GPU, okay? And when this loop exits, for example, when the first iteration runs, you know, when it gets completed, it's, it, it's gonna copy it back to the CPU, okay? That's what this Pragma ACC kernel do, okay? For one iteration, if you see, there is one copy and transfer, okay? And then there is a, another copy or transfer, okay? So we are not done with the iteration yet, okay? 
just you know to calculate the average we are doing like two data transfers we are copying in the a a new value and then we are copying out the a a new value and then there is another pragma acc kernels okay the iteration one is still running right so again what it does is it is going to go and take the data which is a and a new that's that's those are the things we are using so it's going to take a and a new from the host cpu to the gpu and then once this nested for loop ends it's putting it back okay so if you consider for one iteration it is doing four data transfers okay that's why if you explore the uh, output you know the data region has been reached 2000 times because we are running this for 1000 iterations so the first nested for loop it's what it basically doing is it's reaching the data region for 2000 times right because you know at the start of each iteration it's there it's taking the data and then when it ends it's putting the data, putting the data back right and then uh the line number you know 86 here okay 86 okay and what it is doing is it's also reaching the data region 2000 times because we are running the iteration for 1000 times and and you know again it's reaching 2000 times so as a whole if you see uh it's 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 taking you know it's it's doing 4000 data movements okay so let's close this now okay okay now if you see you know go back to the output i was discussing before now it will make sense okay so when this 73 you know line number 73 the start of the first nested for loop it reached 2000 times okay and for copying in time it took like 7 seconds and then for copy out it took uh, 17 seconds because i'm converting it from microseconds to uh, normal seconds okay and again at the uh, 85th line okay the data copy and transfer this is this is the uh, uh, next uh, uh, for loop okay the total is like 7 seconds and then data copy out is 70 seconds okay so if you add up all these things okay in when i was doing okay it was it took like um, uh 7 seconds and then 15 and then uh 74 15 okay when i was like if you refer the table on the left hand side it took me 44 seconds okay so if you think about okay uh, 44 seconds just for data transfers right it's not like doing the actual execution you the compiler is spending 44 seconds just for the data transfers okay so let's go back to the code again okay okay so now you guys might be thinking okay why don't i place the you know data before the start of the while loop so that it doesn't go back and forth right after every iteration going back and forth like four times for each iteration why don't we place the data over here you know before the while loop starts is there any directive that open acc has yes we have a such directive okay so that's the that's the next directive we're going to uh, uh implement pragma acc data copy a and then a new okay so what this what this is going to do is before the while loop starts bring in the data you know of the values you know which are a and a new those are the matrix values bring those data and keep it on the gpu okay so once this while loop ends just keep it back okay So it's a valid argument, yeah. So that's what this this directive is gonna do. Okay. Once you are done, just you know, uh, keep it back. Okay. Uh, uh, write the value to the CPU. Okay. So we have inserted our second directive, and let's let's uh, let's save this one. And before we run it, I just want to explain like what are the different date. You know, this is called a data clause or data directive that involves data. so i just want to explain like what are the different data uh, clauses we have uh, so first one is copy in so that's what uh, that's what uh, uh, we wrote uh, copy in uh, did we write copy in or just copy let me check yeah i just i added copy so it has to be pragma acc data copy okay yeah and uh, so the first one is copy in copy in is nothing but it copies the list of data from the uh, host to the gpu and allocates memory on gpu and next is copy out 
So copy out is nothing but it allocates memory on GPU and copies the data from GPU to host while exiting the looper region. Next one is copy. So copy is nothing but it copies the list of it. It's like the combination of copy in and copy out. Okay. So in the parentheses, you can just pause the list of values that you want to have it on the GPU. Next is there is a create. So it creates nothing but it allocates memory on GPU, but does not copy. Uh, next is delete. Uh, delete, it deallocates the memory on GPU and there is present data. It says the data is already present on the GPU. Okay, but the ma main clause that is very useful in most of the cases, pragma AC data copy. Okay. And what it does is it's the combination of copy in and copy out. So when the, when the uh, uh, loop region starts, when the, before the while loop starts, it, it's going to bring in the value of A and A new. Once the while loop exits, it's going to put it back. Okay. Now let me, uh, okay, pragma AC data copy. Let me uh, clear the screen out and uh, let's run this again. Yeah, the same command I'm using now. Okay. Okay. Now I'm just gonna uh, run the output. Okay. Now you can see how fast it's running. Awesome. So you can see just 3.7 seconds this time. Okay. Just you know, we handled the data transfers like efficiently. It's it just taken like 3.7 seconds. Remember for serial execution, it took 201 seconds. And then we just used an hyphen C flag. It gave us 170. Then we inserted our first directive, Pragma ACC kernel. You know, we didn't do any efficient data transfer. It gave us uh, 92 seconds. And now after analyzing our time information, after placing it, you know, at the correct pace by having another directive, you can see, we have brought down the time to 3.7 seconds. You can, you know, how if you consider with the initial time, which is 201 seconds, it's 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 like a it's like a really good amount of time. Consider that you have like a 10 hours of business running, and if you're able to parallelize in this way, you can see how much time you are saving. Okay, so that's the whole point of OpenACC, like how fast and you know how simple it is, right? And how it's it's portable as well. You can run the same code on the CPU as well. There's nothing wrong. You know, when the compiler is just going to ignore this directive, it doesn't support OpenACC. So that's the beauty of OpenACC. Okay. So I'm going to clear the screen out. Okay. And now let's, uh, yeah, I was just saying, you know, how we can insert the uh, data copy directive. And uh, I'm going to go to the next slide. And uh, yeah, this is saying, you know, how much time it's taking 3.7 seconds. That's the output we got. Yep. And Yep. So now I'm going to uh, show you a uh, success story uh, uh, of uh, OpenACC because I want to share this story because there is a real company that used OpenACC and accelerated the code by spending less amount of work. And Dreamaker is the company and they use OpenACC to accelerate the code that has been developed for more than uh, 20 years. So one of the software products, which is a computational fluid dynamic solver was used by Turbo Machinery Industries. It has more than 2000 users as well. The development time for the software was more than 20 years. You can see the efforts and time invested in the software. Uh, the dev team actually wanted to accelerate the code. So they choose the Titan supercomputer platform at uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Uh, there were a uh, few challenges. They had only a few person months. The team had only less time and manpower to do the code acceleration. So they need to com complete with minimal developer effort and also the code maintenance. Also the GP acceleration should not interfere with other developers to modify or commit changes or bug fixes. There are no duplicate sources of code for maintenance purpose. Also, also code portability. Some of the customers are still using CPU systems. So GP integration should not affect the users that run the software on CPU systems. So these are the challenges lined up for the team and OpenACC was a solution for all these challenges. So in the code, uh, they inserted Open easy, they analyzed what are the hotspots and they inserted the open easy directives. And they analyzed, you know, there were like 30 computationally expensive routines, and these were targeted for acceleration. They use open ACC and uh, they uh, they offloaded, you know, these expensive routines to the GPU to improve the execution time. And uh, let's see the results. Okay. And these key routines picked up 10x speed and also the global speed of the software was 2.5x. They performed the experiment on the 16 core AMD CPU plus one NVIDIA test for K20 per node. So with this acceleration, the customers can now get the same results in half the hours. 
also the dev team were taking a lot of efforts you know to accelerate other modules and tools so the companies a lot of companies and research groups are start, they have started to use open agc and succeeded by actually code by like large margins significant margins so there are like so many success stories out there so yeah just uh, uh, feel free you know to use the nbhvc module that we have in discovery and play around with it and how you can use the open agc directive to accelerate your code and we have reached the end of the presentation uh, to contact you can send us an email at hpc team at nmsc.edu and with our website is hpc.nmsc.edu where we post all our documentation also the workshop the workshop is recorded and i'll post the recording uh, uh, we'll upload the recording youtube and we we'll link it to the website so you can find our recording over there and also we have a twitter channel uh, twitter.com slash nmsu underscore hpc where we uh, post our uh you know any updates that we have with the team and also there is a youtube channel that we have so if you have if you have any doubts or if you want to reach out to us or invest in discovery uh, just uh, reach out to us through these platforms and uh, thanks everyone for joining uh, thank you